rights taken from you? Yeah. Putting them in danger, allowing them walk in traffic, collecting money, lying to people? Have you ever thought about those scammers who think they can fool everyone in their path, but they end up getting a taste of their own medicine? The he book was booked using a fraudulent credit card. All right. Okay. That's why he ain't cussing. Okay. Uh, what? 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 Here are four such cases where these scammers, convinced they could deceive others without any consequences, ended up getting caught by the law. On November 8th, 2021, a woman in Atlanta got scammed at PetSmart. A guy named David offered to fix her car, but he made it worse by spray painting it. He demanded $1,400, took her phone, and tried to steal money. When that failed, he then made her buy gift cards from Bed Bath & Beyond. Well, little did she know, the man's offer to fix a scratch on her car for a reasonable fee would turn into a disaster. PetSmart, uh, 125 perimeter. Next to the bed, bed bath. The one right outside the bed bath. Yes, yeah. ma'am. We, we went to Sandy Springs and they told us we didn't here. So, oh, okay. um, this van pulled behind my car, so I couldn't back out. And then he said, I see you have a scratch in your car. I can fix that for a couple hundred bucks. So, I go into PetSmart, get dog food, come back out. He had pretty much spray painted my car. He's like, that'll be $1,400. And I was like, no. So, they take my phone and they're trying to cash out themselves $1,400. They take case. your phone? How do they take it from me? Pretty much, it's like, do you have cash up? I'm like, I'll give you a hundred bucks, but that's not, I'm not doing any more than that. So they take my phone. Like he takes it out of your hand? Yes. And he's trying to cash up himself. That's the person. Mm -hmm. um, at the Sandy Springs, they literally told us they know this guy. He's been a scam artist for 15 years. It's Middle Eastern, black band. His whole family was in the band. Um, the cash up wouldn't work. My credit cards wouldn't let it go through. Um, it's, uh, so they took me into Bed Bath & Beyond and made me buy $1,400 of Visa gift cards. And uh, the, ca the cashier was like, are you okay? I was like, no. Um, and he took all the receipts, wouldn't let me help them. Um, and so I was freaked out because at first he wanted to take me to a bank. I was like, I'm not going anywhere with you. And then, um, so I just, I called the bank this morning to try to dispute the charges. They told me I had to file a police report. So the Sandy Springs, they said they knew who it was, and he's been, I'm like, then why haven't you apprehended the guy? I was really uncomfortable, but that's his son that kept trying to send money to himself. I never use Cash App, so they're like, here, let me do it. So, um, call five. Thanks. Yeah. Well, she did the right thing. She quickly made a call to 911 when she saw things were going wrong. As the police arrived, she explained everything that had happened. The scammer had trouble with his sneaky plan, so he tried to trick the woman even more. He blocked her car to scare her, making her worried for her safety. To do what he wanted, he forced her to go to a store called Bed Bath & Beyond. There, he made her buy special cards to give him money. It seemed like the scammer knew what he was doing, like he had done it before. You got your driver's license? Yeah. Because if I'm going to fight it in the bank, I have to have some sort of police report filed. His name is David. It's right here. The idiot's trying to cash up himself. This is his son, and his name is David something. And it wouldn't go through, so then he made me go in with him. Like I have limits on my cards so not to do that, but I was shaking so bad I couldn't I couldn't even think. And they had my phone in their hands so I couldn't uh -huh. I just didn't even think about it. I just wanted to get out of there. I was like blood red, about to have a panic attack. And you can see my car, I just spray painted it. He's like because it had a dent in it, he was like, I could fix this, it's gonna be way cheaper than going to, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, whatever, just want to get away from them and come back out. There's spray paint all over my car now, and like, cause I, was, I was on my lunch break, so I had to get back to work, mm -hmm. and literally, he's like, well, I can have it done in 15 minutes, I come out in there, and they had put, like, neon... So you told them, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I was like, sure. But we didn't agree on a price, nothing, and then they wanted $1,400, and said, I'm not giving you $1,400. So you said yes, and then you went inside the store because you had to get some stuff? Yes. Okay. He had his whole family in the car. He had like a son. This is the son in his early 20s, and he was the one that was trying to run the cash out and send it to himself, but my credit cards kept failing it. Uh, so you said you came back 
from the store and then they were spray paint all over your car. Mm -hmm. Like they had just spray painted over that. I did run into a pole, but mm -hmm. they just spray painted over the scratch and I was like, I, that's not what we agreed on. He was like, that'd be fortunate dollars. I'm like, no. It's just very uncomfortable. And you can see my car, it's clearly a dent and it was rusting, so I was like, mm -hmm. shit, I gotta do something about it eventually, but it's my fault, it's stupid. Finally, after several months, justice finally caught up with the scammer. The law enforcement authorities from the Dunwoody Police Department tracked him down, leading to his arrest. Open the door. Dunwoody, please open the door. Yes, ma'am, look through the people and you'll see me. Can I help you? Yes, ma'am, we need David. David, for what? Yeah. <laughs> because I'm the police. David? Yes. He's in the back bedroom. He's in the back bedroom? Yep. How do you know that? Because I have an officer that sees him through the window. Oh, really? Yeah. So, he has a warrant for his arrest. A warrant for his arrest? Yep. Oh, David. Sorry. David? David, I'm not on the bedroom, son. There's a warrant for your arrest. David, watch him wait. You need to come out of the bathroom. Don't Why? Make, What's going do not on? make me come inside there. Maybe go stand over there. You want me to stand over there? Yeah, Why? I do. Because I damn told you to. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm a lady. You're treating me. I'm the police, and I told you to stand over there. You go to jail for obstruction. Do you understand me? Now move. Ask me why. Okay, I'm coming. What's the matter? What's the problem? Come out here. Come right here. There's go ahead and handle here. Wait, what's going on? Yeah, we want for your arrest. Okay, why? For robbery. Robbery? Gina, shut up. What do you mean robbery? The detective is taking a warrant for your arrest for robbery and another offense. What did I rob? You're out here intimidating older people. No, sir? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Going around here uh, saying that you're trying to fix people's cars and then intimidating them and making them pay them more money than what um, you had agreed to. So your warrants are... Robbery by intimidation and criminal damage to property in second degree. Both of which are felonies. I mean, you shake your head no. I mean, it's fine with me. I'm I'm just out here to serve the warrants. No, it is that. Okay? So that's why I'm here. Okay. So, do you have shoes you want to put on or no? That's good. Huh? Right. Right. Where's the shoes at that he can put on? I don't know. As the police informed him of the arrest for robbery, he showed no surprise. Aware of his actions, he acknowledged the consequences, fully aware that he had committed the crime. Well, there's a, there's a felony arrest warrant that says otherwise. Who did I rob? He's going to be at DeKalb County Jail. Where is he going to be? DeKalb County Jail, and he'll go and see a judge sometime tomorrow. DeKalb, and then DeKalb I can bail County. him out from there? Yes, ma'am, you can. Okay. Thank you. I'll get you into the truck as soon as I can, all sure, right? Sure, can I get in? I'm... The man found himself confronting a series of charges, which includes theft by deception, criminal damage to property in the second degree, and robbery by intimidation. Well, if you found this terrible and shocking, then you must watch this. There's a cunning lady out there tricking banks, trying to take away thousands of dollars. On April 7, 2021, at Ormond Beach, Florida's Chase Bank, a woman was arrested for attempting a $30,000 fraud using a falsified U.S. passport card and withdrawal slip. The woman, initially posing as Christine Seiler, confessed to her true identity, Brenda, and revealed ties to an organized fraud scheme involving two unidentified accomplices known as A and Cheese. Well, she even admitted using many fake IDs provided by her associates, exposing an ongoing, systematic effort to defraud multiple banks in the area. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine. What, what's your name? I'm sorry? What's okay. your name? Christine what? Tyler. Christine Tyler, okay. Tyler. Do you have, Tyler, mm -hmm. do you have ID with you? Mm -hmm. She does. Yep. Can I? I can, from the Tyler line. Okay, cool. Thank you. The information, you might have a warrant out of Brevard County. Yeah, so we're just going to confirm that real quick and then we'll let you know, okay? Yeah. <laughs> what, brings you, what brings you in today? Transfer some money to my son. Transfer money to your son? Okay. Are you from Bavard County? No? Okay. 
Alright. How, uh, how did you get here? I'm sorry? Did you drive here? No, I rode with a friend. Where's he at? He's out in the parking lot somewhere. What kind of car does he have? Um, it's a rental, it's a Silver Equinox, I think. Silver Equinox? Okay. Okay, I'll be right I don't have any, any info yet. So, other than they got a tip from um, another branch that she was headed here and that she may have a 49 out of Brevard. Okay. Ma'am, do you have any form of identification other than your passport card? No. No? Okay. Do you have a driver's license? Let me say that I have a, I have a driver. We're looking into that. Mm -hmm. I can't confirm or deny anything yet. Um, you don't have a driver's license? Have you ever been issued a driver's license? Yeah, yeah. Out of what state? Florida. Florida? Okay. Where is that? It's at my sister's. It's at your sister's. Okay. And what's your name? Christine. Last name? Siler. What is it? Siler. Siler? Okay. And your date of birth? Um, don't put me so nervous. I'm sorry? I was not expecting any of this. Okay. Are you okay? What's the matter? You got upset because I asked you your date of birth? Identifying herself as Christine, the lady remains unaware that the police are one step ahead, having gathered all the information. As the encounter unfolds, it becomes clear that her fabrications are on the verge of being exposed, unraveling a sequence of events that will likely challenge her deceptive narrative. Can you look at me? All right, you have the right to remain silent. You understand these rights? With these rights in mind, are you willing to talk to me? Is that your ID? Okay, is your ID in your purse? Huh? No? What's your name? Brenda? Spell it. How'd you get here today? Who? And where are they? And what kind of vehicle was it? And what's their name? You call him A? Is he white male, black male? Huh? How do you know him? What's the arrangement today when he brought you here? Hmm? To get money? Did he provide you with that ID? We're in contact and come here. Okay, so where do you live, Brenda? In Melbourne. Okay, how'd you get up here? How many banks have you gone to today? Just two. Just two? How much cash have you gotten today? None? What happened at the other two banks? How many times have you done this for the guy A? What, I mean, is today the first day, or have you done this in the past, or what? So what's your cut? If you get some cash, how much do you get? I'm not even sure. Huh? I'm not even sure. They said it, it would be like 15, 20%. So how much do you typically withdraw at a time? So this check is made out for 30 grand. So you'll, you'll make a withdrawal, you'll get back in the car, and then you'll give him the cash and then he'll give you a cut? Okay. And and how did you meet up with him? Um, just through an, an actual a mutual friend. A mutual friend, okay. And how long have you been doing this? Finally, the truth came out and Brenda's real identity surfaced. She admitted to the officer that she works with two men named A and Cheese, revealing more about her involvement in the situation and her past experiences. Well, her guilt was evident, clearly visible on her face. Well, in the end, Brenda was arrested for attempting an organized scheme to defraud, classified as a Class 3 felony in Florida. Now, stealing from banks was pretty crazy, right? But wait, because now we're going to witness a whole new level of scam, asking for money for a fake funeral. In Flagler County on December 9th, 2022, Elena Firu and two boys were caught on body cam footage near Palm Coast Parkway. They were wearing neon vests and holding signs. Firu was arrested for lying about collecting money for a fake funeral. She gave a false name connecting it to her supposed niece who died in a crash in France. Hello, how are you? So I understand what you're doing and I'm sorry that you're going through this. However, we cannot have you guys walking in the middle of the roadway. Okay, it's interfering with the flow of traffic. It risks you getting hurt or one of them getting hurt and someone else getting into a crash. Okay. Again,
again, I'm sorry that you're going through this. I'm not trying to be inhumane or, or discredit what you're going through at all. I understand you're probably going through a lot of pain, but you can't be out here walking in the middle of the roadway. How many of you are out here? Four. Four? Okay. Do you have a way of calling them so they can all come here so I can tell them the same thing? Well, I need them to come over here too, because I'm watching him He's in the middle of the road too. What's that? I don't bite alcohol. Okay. Well, I need to tell them too, because they're doing it too. When did this happen? Where? France, Europe. Where? Europe, France. France. Was that your daughter? Was she like vacationing over there? Was she living over there? Yeah, living. Oh. Do you have someone else over there on that side? No, but I don't know where they went. I saw him, but I don't know where he went. Where Where are you parked? Did you drive here? No. You walked here. Me too. You took a bus here. Where do you guys live? In Jacksonville. Were you guys over here? On the other side of the parkway? No. No? This day. So, is this your mom? Okay. So, what I was telling her is I'm sorry what happened to your family. It's very tragic. I'm sorry that you're going through that. However, we can't have you guys walking in traffic, okay? Someone's not paying attention. I mean, you almost got hit when that lady pulled up when he was crossing the road. You know? People aren't paying attention. It's a busy intersection. We can't risk you guys getting hurt getting killed possibly in a crash or someone else getting in a crash yeah. okay yeah. so another thing is too you got to have a permit if you're going to be out here as well and again you cannot interfere with the flow of traffic okay so i wish you guys the best of luck well the police didn't know yet that the woman had lied about her name she later said it was her nieces who she claimed had died in a crash in france she was asking for sympathy and money for a fake funeral, hiding her real reasons behind a made-up sad story. Let's unfold this. When did your, you said your niece? What's her name? Maria. Maria? Okay. And when did she pass? Three days ago. Three days ago? Okay. So in September, did you have another niece named Maria that passed? Huh? Ish, I am. You and your two sons were on the other side doing the same thing, collecting money for a funeral. Me. Yes. Your name and your date of birth that you gave me? Yeah. Three days ago is happened. No. No, September. No. So what funeral were you trying to save money or collect money for in September? No. I. You're lying to me. No. I don't like being lied to. I don't like it. I swear. And the fact that so you're... We you're, have videos. Your face is on. Me. Video I recognize do. you from last time I talked to you and your two sons. In Jacksonville. In. Here. Here. On the other side. Yes. Oh, I swear. It's, it's, you swear? Yeah. You're going you're gonna to swear to God? Really? I don't know what, well. That's a shame. You should be ashamed of yourself. Is the, you should be ashamed time. of yourself trying to do this in front of your two kids. It's first time. No, it's not. I am telling you. I recognize you from last time I talked to you. And the name and date of birth you gave me and the same story you gave me is the same one you told the other deputies on the other side of Palm Coast Parkway by Beltaire. Yes, it is. Stop lying. Do not let me see you doing this to your kids again. You want your kids taken from you? Putting them in danger? Allowing them walk in traffic, collecting money, lying to people? Okay. You need to start telling yourself the truth first and stop lying to me, him, and everyone else. Well, I know you gave your names. Well, Elena's false tale of her niece Maria's death unfolded. The officer, recognizing her from a previous incident, confronted her about collecting money for a fake funeral with her two sons. Despite denial, the officer called out inconsistencies in her story. She was explicitly told not to repeat such deceptive stories, with a clear order to stop these practices. You told the other deputies the same thing in September. Ish. I. Yes. You wrote your name down. I looked it up, and it pulled up in September of this year. No. Mm -hmm. Dimitri is name common. No, it's not. No, it's I not. I am Romanian. Okay. 
Oklahoma man. And in Flagler County, there's only one person that popped up, and that's you. Hi. Yep. And my child. Yep. My, my son. Yep. Hmm. Yep. Wearing green vest with two juvenile males holding a sign saying they're collecting money for a funeral. So again, do you want to keep lying? I don't make this. It's first You're time. a liar. Oh, You're, You're a liar. You're lying. My Stop name. Stop lying. Yes. Your name and your date of birth. And I talked to him last time. By goodwill. Goodwill. Him. Oh, goodwill. With you too. By Beltaire. Yes. Following the discussion with Elena, the police persistently urged her to stop lying, emphasizing the consequences of her deceit. Eventually, the situation escalated, leading to the arrest of Elena Firu. She faced charges including obstructing a highway, providing law enforcement with a fake name, scheme to defraud, and child neglect. So unlike Elena, who's out there asking for money on the road, there's someone swiping another person's card and living it up in a fancy five-star hotel. On March 10th, 2022, the Chambly Police Department was alerted to a disturbing incident reported by the Atlanta Marriott Northeast in the Emory area of Atlanta, Georgia. The complaint raised concerns about an individual who had engaged in fraudulent activities by illicitly using someone's debit card information to cover expenses for a room at the Marriott Hotel. What's that? I have a guest who's been in the house for seven days and he's charged his lady his card $1,568 and she's calling and she's calling from California and she, she wants to press charge and she's like, Shh. he just keeps running it up. Does she know the person? No. So what people are doing right now in the Marriott community, they're hacking into people Marriott number, their accounts, and they're making reservations with their credit cards, and they're doing a mobile check-in, which doesn't require us to check ID or card at the front I've been here for this point. Yeah. So this guy, he just keeps extending his stay and extending, and he just came down today and extended, and she said she got an alert today that her card was overdrawn and she saw it. So she gave me her information too, her first and last name, and I have her phone number for you guys. I don't know if you guys are going to call her, if I need to call her. Right, we'll call. No. Okay. But um, he's upstairs. Okay. Do you, you have his name? Do we yes. know his name? The owner of the compromised debit card discovered the unauthorized charges when she scrutinized her bank account. Astonishingly, the unauthorized transactions amounted to over $1,500, all of which were traced back to the Marriott. This discovery prompted the concerned woman to take immediate action, prompting her to report the incident to the Chambly Police Department. And here they come to arrest the scammer. For this. For this. Police. Shall we please? If you're in here, make yourself known. Shall we please? He's not in here. No, he can't go under the beds. Alright. Despite officers' repeated knocks on the door and unanswered calls, the investigation took an unexpected turn when the manager, cooperating fully, granted them access to the room by unlocking it. To their surprise, upon entering the room, law enforcement discovered that it was unoccupied. The individual suspected of fraudulently using the debit card to cover hotel expenses was nowhere to be found. Well, the investigating officer proactively reached out to the concerned debit card holder. She shared her side of the story, shedding more light on the situation. Hello? Hey, Maria, this is Officer Harrison with Shambu Police Department. Hi, hi, hi. there. Uh, hi, I'm here at uh, Marriott. Uh, so from what I gathered, uh, someone made a reservation uh, using your credit card. And Correct. currently, there is, give me one moment, I just want to go through. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, $1,102.20 has already processed on your card, and currently there are some pending charges, is that correct? There's some pending charges, correct. What's the amount for the pending charges? $1,102.20. 
Hold on. Jessica is still here. I'm still I'm still here at Marriott. I'll go inside and get the exact dollar amount from Jessica. Yeah, Not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just some information okay. I needed from you. He used right. his name and everything to extend the reservation. Mm -hmm. uh, so for one, just a matter of, like I said, get in contact with him, getting his side of the story, and then just seeing that we have enough to make an arrest. Okay, okay. Okay. Approximately 30 minutes later, the investigating officer received an urgent call from the hotel manager. The manager alerted the officer that the suspect, who had been implicated in the fraudulent use of the debit card, had returned to the Marriott. How you doing? What's, up? What's your name, boss? Hello? Is she getting it? Yeah. You with anybody else? Yeah, You're talking about? Yeah. You who? Mom. Yeah, with his mom. Where is she? In the bathroom. All right, well, I promise you, man, we're gonna let you know. Yeah, 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 we're gonna let you all right, I need you to be with the baby. He's an adult. How old is he? Is he an adult? He is my yeah, fiance. Yeah. Listen, listen to the questions I'm asking. What's going on? Right now, you got a kid he somewhere. Listen. I got you. I got you. But y'all making this a lot difficult. All right, well, all right. I need you to be with that baby. Just get king. All, all right, right, stay with that baby. I got you. Just get king. All right. King. You got no weapons on you? No. I'm patching up. Make sure you got no weapons. All right. All right. Now we can talk. You can put your back in. Step off. Ma'am. You y'all have a child together? So, so yeah. Alright, so this is what's going on. The room 640 uh -huh. that he booked yeah. was booked using a fraudulent credit card. Alright. Okay. That's why he ain't cussing. Okay. Uh, what? 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 That's it. He, I thought he used something. Right. He got that from one of his this friends or something. Well, we're trying to figure that out, but I yeah. spoke with the credit card holder, the person who carded it, yeah. our debit card. She didn't authorize anybody to use a card. That is Following the suspect's return to the Marriott, he was officially charged with financial transaction card fraud by the Chambly Police Department. Subsequently, the suspect was taken into custody and transported to the DeKalb County Jail.